Welcome to The Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. And when making travel plans, remember johnnydollarair.com. johnnydollarair.com is our Priceline affiliate link. So when you purchase an airline ticket or rent a car or hotel room, part of the purchase price goes to support the great detectives of old time radio at no additional cost to you. So remember, when making your travel plans, check johnnydollarair.com first. Well, now let's go ahead and get into the conclusion of this week's Yours Truly Johnny Dollar serial. We've got the Star of Cape Town Matter episodes 3, 4, and 5 from July 18th, 19th, and 20th of 1956. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Lieutenant Van Dyle of the Cape Town Police. I was just going to call you, Lieutenant. Is something the matter? You sound very strange. Probably from nursing a lump on my head that had put the star of Cape Town to shame. Uh, I don't understand. You found the diamond? No. To put it politely, somebody slugged me here in my room a while ago. Why? To keep me from sailing on the Southern Empress. She just shoved off, and I've got a strong hunch that diamond is aboard. That bears out what we've learned from Julio Biak. Did he confess to false murder? No, but we're fairly certain he's involved. However, he swears he does not have the diamond. Either he passed it to somebody aboard the Southern Empress, or he was chasing whoever's got it. Lieutenant, I've got to get on that ship. You say it is now on the way? And out of the harbor. You wouldn't happen to have a stray helicopter around, would you? I can make arrangements for one with the military. Can you be at the airfield in 15 minutes? Make it 10. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Cape Town, South Africa, to the Home Office Tri-Eastern Indemnity Associates. Assignment, the star of Cape Town Matter. Expense account continued. Item 8, cab fare to the airfield where the helicopter was waiting for me. I don't know which was throbbing the most, the helicopter engine or my head. On the way out to sea, I had time to try to put the pieces together. But as usual, they didn't fit. A playboy named Andrew Forbes inherits a diamond called the Star of Cape Town worth 150 Gs. The insurance company gets fidgety at the way Forbes is flashing the stone around. So they send me to Cape Town to talk some sense to him. But now Forbes is dead and the diamond is missing. And the fact that his probable killer was picked up aboard the Southern Empress before it shoved off convinces me the stone is somewhere on that ship. But I've got no proof, even though I'm breaking my neck to get there at the moment. We picked up the Southern Empress about 20 miles out at sea, and the helicopter pilot set me down on deck at the stern. A crowd of passengers had gathered, but I didn't see Forbes' sister Agatha, nor Helen, the girl who'd spent so much time with him the night he was killed. I got me a room, then headed for Agatha Forbes' stateroom. As I stood at the door, I caught a whiff of Forbes' favorite perfume, Forever, the kind Sheila had worn. Yes, what... Wow. It's Helen, isn't it? I don't think we've met, Mr... Dollar, Johnny Dollar. No, no, we haven't met officially, but we were both at Forbes' party the other night. You wish to speak with Miss Forbes? And you too, Helen. Who is it, Helen? Uh, Mr. Dollar, I'll be in my stateroom if you want me, Miss Forbes. Very well, my dear. uh, Just a minute, Helen, I... 
Hmm. Well, Mr. Dollar, I must say you are a persistent person. On my job, I have to be, Miss Forbes. Well, as long as you're here, you might as well sit down. Well, thanks. I still would rather not talk about what's happened. Well, I can certainly understand that. But if I can throw any light on it, which I doubt very much, then I suppose it's my duty to. One thing I must ask, however. What is it? That there be as little additional publicity as possible. Forbes' name has been dragged through the dirt enough as it is. I'll do my best. Very well. What is it you want to know? Well, several things. First, do you think your brother could have been killed for a motive other than the diamond? Why, I hadn't thought of that. After all, you must admit that a diamond like the Star of Cape Town would be motive enough to the kind of people my brother thought it amusing to consort with. Yeah, you're probably right. But I'm trying to cover all the possibilities. How about your brother's friend Sheila, for instance? I prefer not to discuss her. But do you think she could have done it? I don't know. I'm afraid I wouldn't put anything past her. All right, another thing, Miss Forbes. I was pretty surprised to find Helen here in your stateroom when I knocked. Why? I didn't know you knew her. I have engaged Helen as my traveling companion. Oh. Kind of sudden, wasn't it? As a matter of fact, it was. My brother told me about her. For one of the few times in his life, he was right about someone. She's a thoroughly nice person. So you hired her? I think I told you before how exhausted I am by all this. I needed someone to make arrangements for me. At the last moment, she decided to make the trip, and I was delighted. Uh Uh-huh. She made up her mind at the last moment, huh? May I ask why all these questions about her? Well, right now, she's pretty high on my list of possible... That's impossible. As far as we know, she was the last person to see your brother alive. And I refuse to believe she could possibly be involved. I hope she isn't. But I've got to run down every lead I can get. If I don't recover the star of Cape Town, the company I represent is on the hook for $150,000. I have not filed a claim as yet, Mr. Dollar. Nor do I propose to until we reach New York. I shall give you every opportunity to recover the diamond. I appreciate that, Miss Forbes. But I'm afraid it still doesn't leave me much time. I went back to my stateroom. The door was open. But I was sure I'd closed it when I left. Inside was the same lingering smell of the same lingering perfume. Forbes' favorite forever. Sheila wore it, but as far as I knew, she was still in Cape Town. Then I remembered her saying that Forbes had given Helen a bottle of it. I also remembered smelling it in my Cape Town hotel room just before I got slugged. I thought then it was a carryover from Sheila's earlier visit. Now I wasn't sure. I started back out of my stateroom just in time to collide with somebody in the passage. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Say, partner, you sure took the wind out of my sails. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know anyone was out here. Oh, I just passing by, partner. Stacy's the name. Ben Stacy. What's yours? Uh, dollar. On the level? Yeah, it crossed my heart. Well, when I tell people I bumped into a guy named Dollar aboard a boat, I'll mean it, huh? <laughs> See you around, partner. So he could have been just passing by, like he said. But if so, he moved awfully quietly for a guy his size. I locked my door and headed for the bar. Expense account item 9150 a double martini, which occupied me just long enough to get a couple of things nailed down in my mind. Namely, open stateroom doors and the smell of perfume. Ah, oh, it had to be Helen. No two ways about it. At this point in my brilliant chain of deductions, I made a big mistake. I looked down toward the other end of the bar. And the person I saw sitting there made me realize in one big hurry that my train of thought had just gotten itself derailed. Hello, Sheila. Hi, Johnny. I thought you were back in Cape Town. Why should I be? What's to stay for now? Good question. But you didn't tell me you were leaving. You didn't ask me. Sit down. You must have decided in a hurry. That's the only way I ever decide anything. Oh? Well, you picked an interesting boat to sail on. I suppose you know Helen's aboard. Small boat, isn't it? Oh, look, Sheila, suppose we drop the flip chatter, huh? Okay, Johnny. What do you want me to tell you? That I hate Helen for taking Andy Forbes away from me? Okay. I do. It's happened before, but Andy always came back. What hurts this time is that he was killed before he had a chance to. She loved... Don't worry. I'll keep out of her way. I won't make any trouble. And, Johnny, do me a favor. What is it? Let's just forget I'm on board. I'd kind of like a decent chance to forget a few things, if I can. Okay. 
Uh, just one thing, Sheila. Yeah. Were you in my room a few minutes ago? No. On the level? Sure, why? I mean, skip it. See you later. Okay. I hope you find your diamond. Thanks. I hope you find whatever you're looking for. You know what it is? No. I got news for you. Neither do I. Well, one thing was clear anyway. If Sheila hadn't been in my stateroom, then the perfume I'd smelled must have belonged to Helen. She seemed to be getting higher on my list all the time. I had to have a talk with her, but by the looks of things, that wasn't going to be easy. She was doing a pretty good job of avoiding me. About half an hour later, though, I spotted her topside in a deck chair with Agatha Forbes. Next to them was my old buddy from the wide open spaces. Why, some of the things we got out west, you just wouldn't believe. I am certain we wouldn't. I've never been there, but I... Oh. Hi, everybody. Well, sir, if it isn't Mr. Dollar herself. Now, I ask you ladies, if that isn't just about the most colorful name a fellow Good can have. Good afternoon, yes, Mr. Dollar. Hope you're a little more rested, Miss Forbes. Thank you, I am. And Helen, I'm glad Miss to Forbes, see you. Forbes, I wonder if you'd excuse me. Why, certainly, my dear. I'm afraid I have a headache. Why don't you go lie down for a while? Thanks, I think I will. Well, now, this kind of a chilly reception, partner. Looks like a little lady doesn't like you much. Oh, well, you can't win them all. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm sure Helen's simply tired, Mr. Dollar. Mr. Stacy here tells me he was quite a good friend of my brother's. Oh? Why, sure, partner. Andy Forbes and I was the best of buddies. Well, I didn't see you at his party the other night. Well, he asked me, of course, but I just couldn't make it. I tell you, though, dog, if I wouldn't have been there if I'd have known it was going to be old Andy's last party. Oh, e excuse me, ma'am. That's all right. Um, uh, how long had you known Forbes, Mr. Stacy? Years, dollar, years. Old Andy and me was always bumping into each other in the darndest places. Cairo, Paris, Copenhagen. I tell you, it was always a barrel of laughs when we got together. I bet. Why, I'll never forget one night in little old Descar. We... Say, we're going to be in Descartes in a couple of days, aren't we? I believe so. Oh, yeah. I suppose everybody will be going ashore for You bet! Well, you don't want to miss Descartes. Why, I can show you some places you just wouldn't believe. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I tell you what, why don't we get up a little party Mr. and... Mr. Stacy, it sounds very pleasant, but I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. I'm not quite in the mood for sightseeing. Oh, I understand. Sure enough, Miss Forbes. A dollar, how about you? Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Well, anybody care to join me for a walk around the deck? No, thanks. I gotta keep up my appetite, you know. See you later. But don't you forget about the car. It'll be a ball. Yeah, it'll be a barrel of fun. Miss Forbes. Yes? Did your brother ever mention this character, Stacy, to you? No. Of course, Andrew had many strange friends that he didn't mention to me. Yeah, I'm sure he did. I went back to my stateroom. This time the door was closed and there was no odor of perfume. But when I went in, I saw that I'd had a visitor again. And this time he or she had been much more thorough. The room was torn apart from one end to the other. I sat down, tired and beat. I, I thought of that building tile somebody tried to drop on me in Cape Town and the bang on the head I'd collected in my hotel room. I knew that whoever I was after was also after me. And now it looked like a third party was involved. Whoever had torn up my room must have figured I might have the diamond. Sheila, Helen, Stacy, it could be any of them. Or even worse, it could be somebody I didn't even know about. But one thing was sure... I was no closer to that king-size diamond. Pretty soon we'd be getting to Dakar, and once everybody had the chance to get ashore, my chances of getting the diamond back were practically zero. I had a strong and sickening hunch that Dakar could be the end of the trail for me, and I didn't like it. Johnny Dollar. This is the purser, Mr. Dollar. Oh, I was just about to call you. Oh? Better send a steward to my stateroom to put it back together. What happened? Somebody just tore it apart. But why? Oh, looking for something, I guess. The diamond? But why would they think you'd have it? 
Well, somebody's got me pegged wrong. Well, what's on your mind? A cablegram was sent to Cape Town about an hour ago addressed to Julio Biak. Julio? Yes, isn't he the man who's being held on suspicion of murdering Andrew Forbes? Yeah, but the news hasn't been released, and obviously whoever sent the cablegram isn't aware of it. What did it say? Contact me, usual place, Dakar. Who signed it? Well, the name was Corner. I checked the passenger list, but there's no such name. A steward delivered the message to the radio room. I've sent for him. He should be able to tell us who sent it. Nice work, Purser. Could be you just helped me wind up this case. <laughs> From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location at sea, en route Cape Town to Dakar. To the Home Office, Tri-Eastern Indemnity Associates. Assignment, the star of Cape Town matter. Expense account continued. Item 10, $10. A token of appreciation to the purser for furnishing me the one good lead I've had in this deal. A cablegram to Julio Biak, who is being held in Cape Town right now as Andrew Forbes' probable killer. But Forbes's diamond, the star of Cape Town, $150,000 worth, was still missing. The cablegram indicated that Julio hadn't been working alone on the deal. Whoever sent it was aboard ship and either had the diamond or was looking for it. Before long, I'd know who that someone was. I started for the purser's office. Mr. Dollar. Huh? Oh, Helen. I'd like to talk to you. Well, now, that's a switch. What do you mean? Ever since I got aboard this ship, I've been trying to talk to you... But you weren't having any. I don't know what this is all about. But you've gone too far, Mr. Dollar. Come again? Don't try to pretend. When I found my room all torn up just now, I realized... Oh, hey, wait a minute. Your room's been torn up, too? What do you mean by two? Mine got the same treatment a while ago. I don't understand. I thought it was you who... Look, Helen, I think you and I had better have a little talk right now. I steered it to the bar. Expense account item 11, $5, drinks. I still couldn't figure out which team she was playing on, but I had to find out, and this was the best way I could think of. May I have a cigarette, please? Oh, sure. Here. Thanks. I've been so confused, Mr. Dollar. Johnny. Johnny. Confused about what, Helen? Everything. It's all happened so fast. And then when I realized that somebody was watching me and following me... Look, I think you'd better start from the top. I suppose so. Maybe it'll make sense to you. I hadn't really known Andy Forbes very long. Longer than I had. That party he gave, it was so strange. All those people I didn't know. I mean, well, I guess it took me a little while to realize he was interested in quite a few people. Sheila? I feel sorry for Sheila. I guess she's pretty bitter about everything. But I didn't do anything to encourage Andy, and I didn't realize he was serious about me until the night of the party. And then he told me he was, and he gave me... A a bottle of very expensive perfume, forever. Oh, his usual gift? I'm afraid so. I don't care. He wanted me to have it, and it's lovely perfume. I liked Andy. He was completely irresponsible, but in his own strange way, he was nice. So... When they told me the next morning that he'd been killed during the night, I couldn't believe it. And then when the diamond was missing... Yeah? His attitude about the diamond was very strange. How do you mean? He seemed to regard it as a, an, an inexpensive trinket. He he was so careless with it. Oh, you're telling me. That's why I was sent down to Cape Town, to try and talk him into being more sensible with it. But, Helen, you said something about being watched or followed. yes. When I left Andy's house that night, I felt that somebody was watching me. Oh. And later I knew somebody had been in my hotel room and now my stateroom torn apart. What does it all mean? That's a good question. One more thing. Yes? You decided to make this trip rather suddenly, didn't you? I wanted to get away from Cape Town. Miss Forbes was kind enough to offer me a job as her traveling companion for the trip, so I took it. Do you like working for her? Yes. She's really a very nice person, perhaps a little on the dignified side. Yeah. She's... I'm pretty concerned over the Forbes name. Wouldn't you be, after all that's happened? Maybe. Oh, Johnny, I've got to be getting back and see if she needs anything, but thanks. For what? Talking to you has made me feel a lot better somehow. Good, good. It's uh, been a big help to me, too. How so? Oh, makes things easier for tonight. 
They're having a dance. And I've been figuring how to go about asking you. Then if you don't mind, I'll go to my stateroom and change. Of course, Helen. See you tonight, Johnny. Right. Well, you two seem to be getting along pretty well now. Yeah, I guess so. I'm glad. I'm sure you realize by now that Helen couldn't possibly be involved in the murder or the diamond theft. I, uh, hope not. You are a very suspicious man, Mr. Dollar. It's part of my job, Miss Forbes. I still don't have any idea who's got your brother's diamond. And if I don't find out before we get to Dakar tomorrow, the chances are I never will. I don't see how you can be so sure the star of Cape Town is aboard this ship. I wasn't sure until today that cablegram convinced me. Cablegram? Yeah, it was addressed to Julio Biak in Cape Town. Biak? Isn't he the one who's under arrest back there? That's right. He was posing as a bartender at your brother's party. We think he's the killer. But apparently whoever sent him the cablegram was working with him and doesn't know he's been arrested. I hope you can clear it up, Mr. Dollar, so that all this publicity will die down. It's been terribly trying. Yes, I imagine it has. I know Helen's felt the strain, too. She's been so nervous lately. Oh, if... If what? Oh, I was just thinking. If only Andrew had met someone like Helen sooner, perhaps none of this would have happened. Maybe not. Had I known she was coming to the party, I... Don't suppose I'd have tried to talk Andrew out of giving it. She's been the one bright ray in all of this. Oh, if only. But regrets are so futile. She looked old and tired and lonely. Sure, maybe she was too worried about the dignity of the Forbes name, but well, I could see now it was about the only thing she'd had all these years. And with a brother who'd kept tossing the name around like a cheap toy, oh, I quit looking at the picture. It wasn't very pretty. Anyway, I had another picture in my mind. Helen. I couldn't quite figure her. Everything she told me could be the truth. Or it could be just one big lie. And there was something else bothering me about the whole deal. Something I couldn't quite put my finger on. A piece that didn't fit a, a discord in the tune. But Helen kept pushing everything else out of my mind. And the feeling didn't change any that night. We danced. And then we went out on the deck. But all the while, one of my stock Confucianisms kept gnawing away at me. He who gets too interested in suspects is building up to king-size letdown. It's beautiful out here. Uh -huh. The moon and the sea and the ship's sliding low. It almost doesn't seem real. I know. I almost wish it could go on this way forever. No people, no places. <laughs> There's just one thing wrong, though. What? That routine doesn't work for very long. I know. Johnny. Hmm? Is there something wrong? Why? He seems so far away, so preoccupied. Well, just uh, thinking about a lot of things, I guess. <laughs> That's not being very informative. I'm sorry, I... I guess I'm not feeling informative. It's okay. Sometimes talking isn't very important. You know, Johnny, the last few days have been a sort of nightmare for me. But tonight everything seems so nice. Why would that be, Johnny? Oh, maybe I could... make a kiss. Maybe you could. Oh, Johnny. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not. not. Well, say oh. now, if you two don't look just like a picture postcard. Hello, Mr. Stacy. Stacy. Yes, sir, I tell you, if they could put a picture of what I saw a second ago on all their travel folders, they'd double their business. <laughs> How nice for them. You want us to run through it again for the proper camera angle? Johnny. Oh, come on now, partner. Can't you take a little joshing? Oh, I'll try, partner. The reason I've been looking for you two, we get into day car in the morning. Yes, I know. And you can have a barrel of fun in that town. So you've told. What do you say we set up a little party? I can show you some places you won't believe. It sounds like fun. How about it, Dollar? Yeah. 
You can count me in, Stacy. Good. I'll see you in the morning then, bright and early. He means well, Johnny. Uh, maybe. You don't sound very convinced. I don't know. Half of my job has always been sizing up people. Suddenly, I seem to have lost my touch. Meaning me? I uh, didn't say that. If it's any help in sizing me up, what happened a moment ago? I meant that, Johnny. Mr. Dollar. What? Oh. Oh, excuse me a minute. Sure. Be right back. Yeah, what is it, Percy? That steward I was telling you about, Mr. Dollar. The one who delivered the message for Cape Town to the radio room? Where is he? That's just it. I don't know. You what? I can't understand it. I've looked everywhere. I'm worried. That's not good. I was counting on him to tell me who sent that message to Julio Biak. Whoever did is probably working with Biak and could have the diamond. Uh, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar. I'll keep looking and let you know the minute I find him. I turned back toward Helen, but she was nowhere in sight. I started along the deck to see if she... Oh! Oh, Johnny! Johnny! What happened? What's the matter? I was walking along the deck. As I passed the lifeboat, somebody stepped out from behind it and grabbed at me. Who was it? I couldn't see. Well, come on, let's take a look. He ran away when I screamed. Oh, I see. So there I was again. Was she lying or telling the truth? I took her to a stateroom and told her to lock herself in for the night. Then I went back to deck and tried for the umpteenth time to put the pieces together. But I didn't have long. Man of the Lord! Man of the Lord! Suddenly everything was noise and confusion. Almost by the time I got to the stern, the ship was circling, lowering a boat. Twenty minutes later, they hoisted a body aboard. He was wearing a steward's uniform, and one look at the purser told me which steward it was. Yeah, my one good lead... Gone. Johnny Dollar. This is Ben Stacy, partner. Oh, hi, Stacy. We'll be docking a day car in an hour or so now. Yeah, I know. Don't forget, I'm going to show you and Helen around the town. Okay, I'll be ready. Say, Dollar, that was a little excitement we had aboard ship last night, huh? That steward who fell overboard? That's putting it politely. Well, what do you mean? I think he got pushed. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location at sea on the Southern Empress, en route Cape Town to Dakar. To the Home Office Tri-Eastern Indemnity Associates. Assignment, the star of Cape Town matter. Expense account concluded. <laughs> Item 12, 50 cents, room service on two aspirins. Right from the start, this whole deal had been a series of headaches. Headache one, Andrew Forbes, international playboy and owner of the star of Cape Town, insured for 150000 bucks. Forbes was tossing that stone around like it was a cheap toy. He wound up murdered, the diamond missing. Forbes' probable killer, Julio Biak, was in a Cape Town jail at the moment, but his confederate was still on the loose. The steward who could have told me who the confederate was had been fished out of the drink dead last night. Now we were going ashore at Dakar, and whoever had that diamond could make it hard for me to find. It could be Stacy, the boy from the wide open spaces. It could be Helen, traveling companion to Agatha Forbes. And I knew if it did turn out to be Helen, it'd leave me kind of sick inside. Worst of all, it could be somebody I didn't even know about. Hence the aspirin. Stacy had asked us to meet him at the gangway at 10 o'clock, but he was nowhere in sight when I showed up. Pretty soon, Helen and Agatha Forbes came along. Good morning, Johnny. Hi, Helen. Miss Forbes. Good morning, Mr. Dollar. Helen just told me about what happened last night. Somebody trying to seize her on deck. How dreadful. Perhaps I shouldn't have told you, Miss Forbes. No, I... no, I'm glad you did. Anything happened during the night, Helen? No, I kept my stateroom door locked. Well, here you are. Sorry I'm late. I guess I overslept. Already? Already. Say, now, I'm mighty glad to see you with us, Miss Forbes. I was hoping you'd come. I won't be going with you. I'm going to stay aboard and rest. Oh, come on now, Miss Forbes. Do you good to let your hair down and frisk around a bit. Really, Mr. Stacy, I assure you I don't feel like frisking around a bit. I'll see you when you get back. Say, now, I guess I put my foot in my mouth talking that way. Oh, well, I usually do anyway. It's sure big enough. 
Well, one thing I had to give Stacy credit for, he was a good guy. He threaded us through street after street in the native quarter of Dakar. Narrow passageways crowded with people in stalls where native hawkers were peddling all sorts of merchandise. This is fascinating, isn't it? Well, like I told you, Helen, Dakar's quite a place. I love it. I wonder if it isn't about time we started back to the ship. See, just a minute, Helen. I think there's a shop around here you'd be interested in. Silks, perfume, stuff like that. You interested? Sure. Well, let me get my bearings a minute. You need more perfume? Johnny, does it bother you that I still wear this perfume Andy Forbes gave me? If it does, I won't. Yeah, yeah, the shop I had in mind is right down the street. Come on. Stacy led us to the shop. Helen began trying on dresses and robes. This I didn't like. If she had the diamond, this was a golden opportunity to pass it along. But there wasn't much I could do about it. Then all of a sudden I realized that Stacy was nowhere in sight. I went outside and started along the street looking for him. Then I spotted a man following me, a native in a burnoose. So I ducked down the next alley to shake him. But he didn't shake. Then I noticed that this was a blind alley. The native was closing in. And what he had in his hand looked strangely like a knife. Suddenly a door beside me opened. Come on in, Dollar. Stacy. I said come on in. A gun in front of me, a knife behind me. I guess I don't have much choice. So, you had your stooge steer me here. I figured sooner or later you'd start looking for me, so I just thought I'd make it easy for you. Well, thanks. Stick around, Hassan. I may need you. Very well. Hassan's a pretty effective persuader, Dollar. How jolly. So you're the boy I've been after, Stacy. Correction. You're the boy I've been after, Dollar. What are you talking about? A diamond called the Star of Cape Town. Let's have it. Oh, look, don't give me that routine. Forbes was knifed by your buddy Julio Biak in Cape Town. You killed the steward aboard ship to keep him from telling me it was you who sent the cablegram to Julio. Right, boy, Dollar. That should mean you've got the diamond. Smarten up, boy. You think I'd have arranged this little reception for you if I already had the stone? Wait a minute. You're the one who was doing all the room searching aboard ship? I'm the one. Now let's have it. I don't have it, Stacy, and I don't know where it is. Oh, you got a real sense of humor, Dollar. So has Hassan. Why don't you show him, Hassan? Very well. <coughs> oh! Hey, look, this isn't going to do you any good. It's not going to do your face any good either, Hassan. Hey, look, you... Don't try it, Dollar. I guarantee you'll get yourself shot. Now, look. So you're a nice, brave boy, but you're being foolish. It's no good trying to snow me. I got it all figured out. Just what have you got all figured out? It isn't in her stateroom. It isn't in yours. I searched them both again this morning before we came ashore. That's why I was late. You're talking about Helen. Who else? That's why I steered her to that shop to try on dresses. The little lady who owns it is a friend of mine. She'd have found the diamond if Helen was carrying it. Helen? Yeah, Helen. How do you know she had it? Process of elimination, buddy. She was the only one with Forbes before Julio got to him. I've been watching you and Helen like a hawk dollar. There's only one time she could have given you the stone. That was during that tender little clinch on deck last night, right under my nose. Right under? What's the matter, dollar? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Yeah, what Stacy had just said popped the whole deal into place suddenly. Right under my nose. Right where it had been all the time. I tell you what, Dollar, you got just five minutes to tell me where that diamond is. Hassan will be here with you, and he's going to start persuading again if you don't talk. I had to get back to the ship somehow. That meant I'd have to do some fast talking. I looked at Hassan. I couldn't tell which was glittering more, his black eyes or the knife he held against my throat. One wrong word, and I knew he'd start carving. Hassan. What do you want? Um, you come from the desert, don't you? Why? You're a long way from home. Ever get homesick? What do you mean? Oh, I, I was just thinking, with half the money from that diamond, you could buy yourself an oasis with all the trimmings. Do not worry. Stacy will pay me well when we get the jewel. Well, what's he giving you for this job? Three goats and a new burnoose? Dollar. Hey, it will be easy with that knife. It's just that everybody who works for Stacy seems to wind up getting paid off the wrong way. The wrong... Take Julio Biak for one. The guy Stacy hired to get the diamond in the first place. He's roosting in the Cape Town jail right now. You lie. Oh, no, you can check on it. Then there's the steward who sent Stacy's message to Biak. He got shoved overboard. You can check on that, too. But, uh, I'm sure a thing like that would never happen to you. Go on, Dollar. Okay. I know where the diamond is. How do I know I can trust you? You can come with me to get it. I don't know. I... At least he was thinking about it, and that's all I wanted. 
His eyes got that faraway look. That's what I was waiting for. I whipped my arm up and knocked his knife loose. I buried my fist in his midsection. He jackknifed. A rabbit punch finished him off. I dove for the wall just as Stacy came charging in. What the... I kicked the gun out of his hand. I went to work. Stacy was rugged, but I finally made it. I got the Dakar police to put Stacy and Azan on ice, patched up my face and headed back to the ship. But there was something else hurting me a lot more than my face. Helen. Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. Where have you been? I was... Your face, what happened? Skip it. I have to hand it to you, Helen. That was a real Class A snow job you pulled on me. What are you talking about? Yeah. It was right under my nose all the time. The perfume Forbes gave to you. Now, where's the bottle? On my dressing table, but... Okay. A pretty fancy bottle. Solid base. Or maybe not so solid. Johnny! Uh Uh-huh. In the base of the bottle. Star of Cape Town. I'll bet you're real surprised, aren't you? Johnny, I didn't know it was there. I didn't have any idea. I swear it. She's telling the truth, Mr. Dollar. Miss Forbes. Wow. Well, Agatha, that gun looks sort of out of character. Perhaps. I won't hesitate to use it if necessary. I don't understand. It was cruel of Andrew and me to use you like this, Helen, but we saw no other alternative. Wait a minute. You and your brother rigged this whole deal right from the beginning, didn't you? Sure. Sure, because you slipped yesterday, Agatha, when you told me you discussed your brother's party with him. But back in Cape Town, he told me it was a surprise party for you. Johnny, I still... Oh, it's simple, Helen. That bottle of perfume would have turned up missing when you got to New York. Agatha would have appropriated it. One big question, Agatha. Why all this? Have you any idea what it means to see somebody drag the family name through the dirt... Time after time with his wild escapades? And have you any idea what those escapades cost? Your brother was in debt, huh? Terribly. We were pressed to the wall. Oh, why didn't you sell the diamond? We were bound by the will not to. But arrangements were made with someone in New York. What we could get for the diamond, plus what we could collect from the insurance. It would be enough. Oh, nice little scheme. But you didn't figure on Julio Biak trying for the diamond in Cape Town and killing your brother in the process. No. At first, I didn't know what to do. But it soon became clear that more than ever I had to go through with a plan. My brother's creditors began to make trouble right after his murder. The diamond, please. Oh, now look. Don't you get it, Agatha? You're licked. What do you mean? You've done all this to protect the Forbes name. Of course. You failed. The story's out. No. It's known only to the two of you. How are you going to keep us from talking? I'll do whatever is necessary. Bribe us? Kill us? Sorry, neither one's going to work. Mr. Dollar, do not force me... You're trapped, Agatha. By the same thing that got you into all this. The Forbes name. Are you going to brand it with murder? No. No, I don't think you are. I don't think you could. I... I don't... I I don't know. Please, please, Mr. Dollar. I'll take the gun, Agatha. Thanks. Oh, Johnny. It's okay, Helen. I guess I... I have failed, haven't I? All the way. Expense account item 13, $375.50. Transportation and incidentals from Dakar home. Expense account total, $1,283.60. I turned the diamond over to the authorities for safekeeping and Agatha Forbes to face charges of fraud. Julio Biak and Ben Stacy were indicted for the murder of Andrew Forbes. Remarks about Agatha. I guess she did what she did because she thought the end justified the means, which is one of the oldest sucker traps of them all. About Helen? Well, now that she's no longer a suspect, could be I'm no longer building up to a big letdown with her. At least it hasn't come yet, and I'm still waiting. And the waiting is real pleasant. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a yacht that wasn't there and a man who wasn't there. They never were. But that's where I found them. 
Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is written by Robert Reif and produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Gene Tatum, Virginia Gregg, Harry Bartell, Chester Stratton, Marvin Miller, and D.J. Thompson. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Welcome back. There are so many hallmarks of this being a Robert Reif script, right down to Johnny's use of deal uh, several times and a loudmouth tourist type being a villain. Nevertheless, this is not a bad serial at all with a lot of great action and I thought a really complicated plot with some superb twist and a good solution. While E. Jack Newman writing as John Dawson, and Les Crutchfield wrote the lion's shares of the serials with Jack Johnstone III, the ones that are written by others such as Rife and Tony Barrett really add some variety to the stories that are told during the serial era. It's worth noting that the teaser at the end is not actually for the episode that ended up airing next. Rather, as has happened once or twice before, things got shuffled around and another story would appear uh, the next week and then we would end up getting the story that was described in that teaser, the Sea Legs Matter, the week after that. So if you were intrigued by that little teaser, just hold that thought for an additional week. Now, I do have an update regarding my plans for the Old Time Radio Adventure series. And this is something that we're planning to launch on the podcast after we finish Mr. and Mrs. North. So it'll probably be sometime in 2025. And what I had kind of penciled in as my immediate plans uh, was to go ahead and play Bold Venture as the first series we would do as that sort of new uh, adventure series. And I've had several listeners who've asked about Bold Venture, and I, I do need to let you know that at this point, whether we're able to follow through with that sort of plan is very much up in the air at this point. And it's kind of a good news, bad news situation. What happened is that Carl Amore, who was the founder of Radio Spirits, but has since sold that business, obtained an agreement with the nonprofit organization that holds the physical copies of Frederick Zim's radio library. Frederick Zim, of course, the famous radio syndicator of many series, including Bold Venture. Mr. Amari held a Kickstarter campaign that was successful, so he will be making the complete Bold Venture set available for sale probably sometime next year. The good news, I think, for those who are willing to purchase the set is that those who purchase the set from Mr. Amari will, for the first time, in 70 or 80 years, be able to hear the complete Bold Venture Radio series. By my count, there are 59 episodes that are in general circulation, so about 19 uh, have not been heard since the 1950s. 
For our purposes, it does put into doubt what we will be able to do with Bold Venture. I have stated and maintained a policy of not using any material that anyone claims is licensed to them. This is something that becomes even more critical as we've moved into another stage in terms of podcasting. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that we're not going to be able to do it. What it does mean at this point is that I don't know. Mr. Amari has stated that for anything other than home use, that there would have to be some sort of license. Now, would the license fee be something that the podcast could afford? Would the terms of the license be something reasonable that I could work with? The answer to those questions are, I don't know. And honestly, I don't think that uh, I'll be in a position to address those with Mr. Amari until things are more settled in 2024. And... I do want to say that we will do the Old Time Radio Adventure Series. We may just have to end up doing something else. And it might work out with Bold Venture. Uh, Again, I don't know, but I also know that so many have asked about Bold Venture. And I want just to be very transparent about where we're at. I would love to do it, but it's kind of out of my hands right now. Now on to listener comments and feedback. And we go on to YouTube. A listener writes, My favorite Radio Detective episode is Johnny Dollar, The Nick Shern Matter. Well, uh, that's good news because we're actually going to be doing that serial the week before Christmas. And it's my favorite Christmas episode as well. And I think actually the Johnny Dollar serial that I like the best. Now, of course, on YouTube, because we're a couple weeks behind, it'll be a bit later. But we are going to have our Christmas Radio Detective playlist uh, posted right at the top. And you can find the Nick Shern Matter along with all of the other detective programs we've done. And then I received this interesting Facebook message from Thomas who writes, I've always said post-1955 Johnny Dollar and Jim Rockford are the same person. That's an interesting comment, Thomas. I don't know if I would go quite that far. Because I think there are a couple of fundamentals with Rockford and the way his character works that make him very different to Johnny. Uh, I, I think Jim Rockford is more cynical than Johnny Dollar. He also has a very negative relationship with the establishment, and in particular, the law enforcement establishment, except for his friend Dennis. And even then, I think Johnny relates better with Randy Singer, who's not even his only law enforcement friend. Plus, there's also the essential nature of Jim Rockford. Jim is a natural con man. He doesn't really use it to defraud innocent people, but... I think it's definitely a part of that character's nature, and I don't think you can view Johnny in quite that same way. That said, what I would say is that Johnny Dollar probably has more in common uh, post-1955 with Jim Rockford than he does earlier old-time radio detectives, including previous takes on Johnny Dollar. Thanks so much for the comment, Thomas. I really appreciate it. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporters of the day. And since this is the first Friday in December, I want to go ahead and thank Patreon supporters who have been supporting us for five years this month. Thank you to Deborah supporting the podcast at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 per month or more, and thank you to Robert, supporting the podcast at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Again, thank you so much for your support. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. 
If you're listening on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check the notification bell, as well as leaving comments, all those great things that help a channel to grow. We'll be back on Tuesday with another Yours Truly Johnny Dollar serial, but join us back here tomorrow for Dragnet, where... Phone message for you, Friday. Came in a few moments ago. Thanks, Davis. It's from R&I. I I got to make? Take a look. No make or warrants on James Vickers, Greg. Let's talk to him. Come on. Yeah. Minor wound, Joe. Bullet penetrated the fleshy part of his hand. Didn't touch the bone. Thought this guy had an arm wound, too. Just a neck, man. That officer you shot, Vickers. He's dying. Is he? He's a family guy. Got a wife, two kids. Has he? Why did you shoot him, Vickers? Ask him. We did. Then you know the reason. Said there wasn't any reason. That's right. Look, we're going to make you on this, Vickers. You know that, don't you? I don't know anything. Why'd you shoot him? Shut up. Why'd you shoot him? Joe. Yeah. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.